Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan, and today I'm going to be sharing with you all our end of the year read aloud review. Now, this year I'm going to do it a little bit different. I am not only going to share our favorites and least favorites, I'm not going to share all of them because there's just too many because when you have so many kids and they have their independent reads plus family read alouds, that's a lot of books to share. So I'm just sharing our favorites and least favorites and then I'm going to share some of my favorites of some books that I've read and my least favorite. Now, before I get started, I do want to let you know that this is actually part of a collaboration. So if you want some good reviews of some books that people have read in their homeschool throughout the year, I'm going to stick a link to the playlist down below in my description. This collaboration is hosted by my friend Katie over at Life in the Mundane. She hosts this every year, and every year she's done it, I've participated. So these are in no particular order. These are just some of the ones that we really enjoyed this year. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is actually a little series that my daughter really enjoyed. This is by one of my favorite children's authors, Cynthia Ryland. This is called the, it is the Cobble Street Cousins series, and they're very, very short little chapter books. These are, she actually is reading beyond this level at this point, but she did really enjoy them as like sweet, quick reads and very age appropriate. But um, there is a whole series. I think she might be missing one or two from this, but she absolutely loved these. So she wanted me to share that with you guys. One of my sons wanted me to share this Imagination Station book. There is a bunch of these. They are done by Adventures in Odyssey, and he really enjoyed these. These are great, like, kind of more earlier chapter books, um, and they do have some pictures interspersed, and we he really enjoyed reading these uh, because they are historically focused, and so he really liked those a lot. The next one is the first, I think this might have been the first read aloud we did as a family at the beginning of the year. And I actually chose this because my friend Ryan over at Mama on Mission shared this one last year, I think in her read aloud video. So uh, we, this is just silly and funny. We, uh, well, I gave the characters different voices and stuff. And so you got to read it like that. That's what makes it even more fun to read. But this is just some kind of zany stories about Sir Lancelot the Great. And we had a lot of fun with that one. The next one was um, my oldest son. He absolutely loved this book. This was a book that he read toward the beginning of the year as an independent read. And he made like a whole poster um presentation to share with the family about it with like some actual true facts but then things about the story. He actually read it um, so much so that the cover is off of it um, and uh, the summer reading that we're doing this summer one of the little I'll share that in a separate video but one of the little spaces on his summer reading bingo for the summer actually has reread a favorite and so he actually wants to reread this so he really did like this this is song for a whale and then uh, this is a family favorite for sure we love the James Harriet treasury uh, I love the James Harriet stories that are written like for adults as well. But this one is just super sweet and special and has some beautiful illustrations. All of my kiddos really enjoyed these a lot. Okay, so then I have a list because some of these I didn't grab to show you guys. They're like all in the bookshelf downstairs and everything. But um, another favorite was the Wing Feather Saga. Well, we read the first book. We read it like two or three years ago, I guess, as well. Uh, but really going back through it, now that my kids are a little older, they were like so into it. And then it created an extra incentive to read through because they released the show and all that kind of stuff. So that is definitely a fun one, especially if your family is a 
is a fan of like adventure stories, kind of like The Hobbit and things like that, Lord of the Rings, that kind of stuff. We love that. So um, it was definitely a favorite. The next two are actually by the same author, Kate D. Camillo. And um, one of them we have read before several years ago. And at the time, we didn't really care for it. Okay, and that is The Tale of Despero. We actually didn't really like it all that much, um, but we read back through it again. Well, I say read, we listened. We listened to the audio version of it. And I think there is something about the audio version of that book. We enjoyed it so much. Or maybe it was because my kids were older and were more into it and stuff. But honestly, I think it was because of the narrator of the audiobook because I even enjoyed it a lot this time. So that was one of them, but same author, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Oh my goodness. So that is one I actually read for myself, which is really kind of funny. I had a friend recommend going through and reading it. And so I read it for myself and I cried. Okay. So there are some triggers in that book. Okay. Um, but it was so good and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to share this with my kids. It was one of those books where my kids were just like, don't stop reading, don't stop reading, don't stop reading. It is a pretty quick read and it does have some pictures interspersed as well. Uh, but we really, really enjoyed that one. Okay, so one of the things, I don't know if y'all can hear this, but my chickens are squawking in the backyard. It is so loud to me, but I'm sure you guys can't hear it. Um, <laughs> they must have just laid eggs or something. But anyway, um, the next series I want to share with you guys that was a favorite of one of my kiddos was the Dead Sea Squirrels, okay? And this is a book series that he has gotten so into. And this is my son, particular. this is my son who has dyslexia. So to see him get into a book series that he really loves and reads um, has been really great to see. And so that was the one that he chose uh, for me to share with you guys. And I didn't grab those, but um, they are apparently they're very funny. Basically, this boy, his dad is an archaeologist. They're at a dig and he finds these petrified squirrels and puts them in his backpack. And he brings them home on the plane and they're not actually dead for good. And so they become unpetrified and kind of wreak havoc. And it's supposed to be hilarious, apparently. So he just really enjoyed those. So, um, so that is definitely a favorite. My oldest son, of course, loved reading through The Hobbit. I told you we're big fans of those of those books anyways, but he read that for himself this year. And that is what I have on my favorites list. There might have been some others. I kind of started losing track of everything that we read this year between choosing things from the library or listening to audiobooks on Scribd. Um, we just listened to and read a lot this year. So those are just the favorites. Okay, and this is the part I kind of hate doing and it is the least favorite books. Um, there were a lot in between and everything, but these two were the least favorite. They just, there wasn't anything, it wasn't like they were horrible books or anything. They just weren't very engaging to us, like to our family as a whole. And one of them, I just really, like none of us really cared for. But the first one was The Door in the Wall. This is one we really wanted to like. I especially really wanted to like it. We just didn't really get into it, which is kind of sad because it's one that people recommend a lot. Maybe it's one that if we ever read it again in the future, we'll maybe be back into it or get into it, but we just didn't really care for it. And this is the one we just did not like. Little Pear. It's one of the, it's on the sunlight list and that's kind of one of the reasons why I picked it. We just did not really care for this. Uh, I don't know, just didn't like it. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna get to my list. I have been 
listening to and reading a lot of books so far this year because I this is the second year I've done the Goodreads challenge like a little challenge on Goodreads and so I thought that I would share some of my favorites with you guys and then my least favorite that I've listened to or read this year so these again are in no particular order but I really enjoyed Pitching a Fit by Israel Wayne it's an excellent book from a biblical perspective about parenting, um, specifically about like anger, frustration, just being over it, like that kind of thing. Um, and I think those are always good things to have a heart check on. You know, I think we can be quick to become prideful and say that we don't have an issue with anger or we don't have an issue with frustration or anything like that. There were a lot of things scripturally in that book that were very convicting to me. And one, like some of the things I really appreciate about the book are that it is so scripturally, like there's such a scriptural foundation in that book. And so I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, it was really, really great. Okay, sorry, I had to change my battery. Okay, so the next one, don't get it confused with Brave New World. That was a book I read in high school that I regret. But anyway, um, but the <laughs> but the book next that I would recommend that was so good and it is so like worldview focused and so relevant to right now. Keep in mind these are mom books, okay? Parent books, <laughs> okay? Um, Strange New World, okay? So Strange New World, I cannot remember the author and it has a longer name beside it, but I don't remember all of it, but um, it was excellent. And this is actually one that I listened to on Scribd. I, I really want to purchase this one. I also want to purchase Pitch in a Fit. I think that's another good one to just keep in your library and highlight like crazy. But Strange New World, it is a very kind of philosophical view of the modern age and where we are going in the modern age and um, how that fits in biblically. Um, like I said, it's very, very good. So I would highly recommend that one, especially if you're into a lot of like a uh, worldview for yourself. Like I think that is something as parents that we need to be pretty proficient in is understanding where our Christian worldview fits in with where the world is going. And so that is a definite read for that purpose. So, okay, so the next one is a sequel to a book that I read last year called The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, which is about, um, it's kind of based on a family in Kentucky that had a medical condition that actually causes their skin to have a blue hue, okay? And it is set during the Great Depression, during the Pack Horse Project. It's in rural Appalachia during the Pack Horse Project where the government um, started this, this Pack Horse Librarian uh, program to take books to rural Appalachia to promote literacy. So it is a great book. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. And so I just, in at the end of winter, finished The Book Woman's Daughter, which is the sequel, and loved it. I think I actually liked it better than the first one. So if you've read those books, I'm curious if you liked the second one better than the first one. But uh, that was a really, really good one. It had actually a lot of mystery to it, kind of like, ah, like there were a lot of like, ah, kind of moments uh, for me. But it was really good. I liked that one a lot. The next one that I really enjoyed is one that's pretty well known and talked about recently, and that is M is for Mama. That one was just really encouraging. I love to read things just from other mamas, like giving encouragement and building each other up, spurring each other on. So that's a good one for that. The next one is another fun read, and that is, um, it was called The Kitchen Front. So I love historical fiction, and... Uh, hence the book woman of Troublesome Creek and stuff. It's kind of historical fiction, but um, 
I really, really enjoyed the kitchen front. So the premise of that book is it is set during World War II in England, and there was actually a radio show called The Kitchen Front that was all about ideas on how you could use your rations, your food rations, to make new meals. And so it was like different recipes and stuff like that. So basically what happens is there's this little community and they, uh, the Kitchen Front radio show decides to have a contest where women in the community can compete to become the co-host of the Kitchen Front. And so that's the premise of the book is, um, and, and everything kind of intertwines and it's just, I really enjoyed it. So that is one that I really liked and um, had as my favorites. And there were some other ones in there as well. But as I said, I'm just sharing my favorite and least favorites. My least favorite was, uh, <laughs> so I have been trying to participate in the whole storied motherhood thing on Instagram, which is each month there's a different book that you read. And so I read Pride and Prejudice for like, but I don't even know how many times I read that along with them. And then I think it was, I think it was the month of March or maybe it was February. I can't remember what month it was. The book was the four hour school day. I just did not really care for it. I, there wasn't anything wrong with it. I think a lot of people like that book and there is nothing wrong with that. It just was my least favorite. I just didn't glean a lot from it, um, which is fine. Um, but that was just my least favorite. So anyway, so those are our favorites and least favorites. Make sure to check out the playlist in the description below. Also, I would love to hear what are your favorites and your least favorites from this year, whether it be for your homeschool or for yourself, and I will see you guys on future videos. Thanks so much, guys, and have a blessed day.